Good evening and welcome to St. Mary's High School for tonight's matchup between the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans and the St. Mary Rough Riders. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. And Josiah, we have a great WBL matchup tonight. Two teams with a lot of history. This Ottawa Glendorf team trying to hit their stride at the right time with a nice winning streak coming into tonight. And St. Mary's hoping to break that. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, a very important game tonight, especially in the Western Buckeye League here tonight. You know, both teams come in 3-0 and on the year, trying to stay pace with Bath, who's undefeated right now, 11-0 and um, on the year. So very important game here to keep pace with Bath. But like you said, you know, we're coming in as two storied programs, want to get a big win tonight. Take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's teams. As you see, the first shot by St. Mary's up, able to get that offensive rebound. Rebound came down to number 20, Cora Rabel, and she's able to put the put back up for two. Ottawa uh, Glandorf quickly up the court. That one's going to go out of bounds. The rest of the starters for St. Mary's, Ella Jacobs, Regan Allmeyer, Morgan Hess, Reese Rabel, and Cora Rabel. For the Ottawa Glandorf Titans, they're going to start number three, Carson Erford, number 12, Lily Hazelman, number 22, Kaylin Grothaus, number 32, uh, Caitlin Kimmett, and 34, Katie Kaufman. We are all tied at two as Ottawa Glandor's first basket was by Caitlin Kimmett on the inside. As St. Mary's now makes their trip, second trip to the offensive side. OG is continuing in this tight man-to-man -man defense as Ella Jacobs was able to, to skirt to an open spot and pull up and knock down the two. That's a great job by Ella Jacobs. She just worked through that defense. But quickly, here comes Ottawa Glandorf and off the glass, Kaylin, Kaylin Grothaus able to get two. And that's what Ottawa Glandorf likes to do is right there, you almost saw it. They love to turn defense into offense. They're going to go quickly. And they love to put pressure with this man-to-man -man defense. Jacobs does a nice job dribbling out of trouble. See a trap coming along the sideline. And St. Mary's is going to have to take an early timeout, just a 30-second timeout, so we will keep it here. But you kind of see it in the early going. You know, Ottawa Glandorf, they love to use that defense. They use it in all sorts of forms and fashions. They love to jump. They use that man-to-man. -man. They can go zone if they want to, but they trust these girls on the defensive side of things. And that is the challenge for every team, night in and night out. How are you going to handle that pressure? How are you going to get some space? And not, how are you not going to panic and force bad turnovers? You saw St. Mary's able to escape that trouble, almost gave it away, able to gather it back in, but they're going to see that a lot. you got to be very conscious of where you are in the floor. And right there, almost a turnover. Luckily, the Timeout save the possession. Yeah, absolutely. And Coach Burke, uh, for this Rough Riders team, mentioned you know the keys for his team tonight is one, they got a rebound, two's limit those turnovers because he knows that OG defense gets in their face. They want to pressure, force you to make those long passes and use those athletes to go get those balls. So we'll see how St. Mary's can handle it early. You know, a good timeout by Coach Burke, kind of settle his girls down, maybe remind them, you know, what we're what they've been working on in practice all week. Close call that time as Corey Gable is running into the backcourt to get that basketball almost over in the back, but just made it over. You see Rabel able to hand it off. She gets it over to Reese Rabel. Now Jacobs working up top against Grothaus. As St. Mary's now showing some patience, just trying to find an opening, not trying to force anything. Nice pass on the inside, kick it back out. Jacobs for three. That one's going to be short. Rebound comes down to Lily Hazelman. Hazelman, as she was trying to get through a couple of Rough Rider defenders, is going to pick up the foul. They're going to give this one to number four, as actually Ashley Ness. So I believe I actually I for, um, had the wrong person down on my scorecard. I had Morgan Hess out there as a starter, and it's actually Ashley Ness, number four. That is going to be her first, team's first. And you can see as OG got that rebound, they, they want to run. And they want to get see if they can get quick buckets and do it early. And you see on that last one, as OG got the rebound, they were looking to go and just got a foul. So Chloe Glenn, she's checked in for the Titans, trying to get her hands on that one. St. Mary's does a nice job of getting that one up. And a big three-pointer by Reese Rabel. So now Ottawa Glendorf, they find themselves down here early, 7-4 to four after the three-pointer by the Rough Riders. Three-pointer goes up. This one's off the back of the iron. 
Roadhouse with the put back on the offensive rebound. She gets that one to go for her fourth point. Great rebound there by Grothaus as she was able to keep the ball high. Almost looked like she was about to travel, but gained her composure and put the shot right up and knocked down to cut this lead to one. Jacobs finds a wide open core Rabel underneath. Not able to finish, though. And Ottawa Glendorf comes up with the rebound. Well, we see St. Mary's here coming out even off of the miss. A little bit of full court pressure forcing this OG team who likes to run to maybe even get a little bit quicker than they want to. So fight for the loose ball on the floor. And we're going to have a jump ball possession error will favor the Rough Riders. We have a couple substitutions coming into the game. Now number five, Morgan Hess, checks into the game for St. Mary's. And we see number 23, Emma Brinkman, come in for Ottawa Glandor for the first time tonight. And number 24, Micah Aldrich. Ottawa Glandorf uses their bench a lot. They are very deep. They run in and out, and that's part of the style of play. That's why they can be so aggressive and they can run up tempo because they can go deep into that bench with not a lot of drop-off. Yeah, as you said already, eight deep here, and a great cut there by number five, Morgan Hess, for the easy bucket. So Morgan comes in quickly, gets her first two points of the night as the Rough Riders get a turnover. Cora Rabel drops it off. Here's Allmeyer. Chloe Glenn tries to cut her off. Nice find on the inside. Can't get that one to go. Tries to run out to Glenn, but throws it away. Then go back underneath, kicks it back out. Here's Rabel. Long pass. And St. Mary's is going to look to settle. See Reese Rabel trying to direct some traffic. Picks up her dribble, able to drop this one off. As he gets that one off, that one's off the back of the iron. No good. Offensive rebound to the Rough Riders. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Chloe Glenn able to come up with a rebound. She's going to pass it up ahead. Almost able to get it away. But Emma Brinkman tracks it down. Turn around, no good. Aldrich couldn't connect. So fast pace to play right here. St. Mary's, they're going to run the floor. Get this one off the glass for two. Ashley Ness gets her first two points of the night. As St. Mary's now has a five-point lead with 2.38 left to go here in the opening quarter. Well, a great vision there by St. Mary's to find their teammate. OG, you know, they like to run, so all five of their players were inside the three-point line, and off of that miss, they looked up quickly and found the teammate and was for an easy bucket. Coach Burke would love those easy buckets all night. Nice slip pass by Hazelman that time as she finds Micah Aldrich down low for two. And St. Mary's doing a nice job not wasting time on those out of bounds. They quickly get the ball in and move it up before Ottawa Glandor is able to settle into their pressure. Two minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. So Cora Rabel, she's going to work and drive, goes into a couple of OG defenders, and we're going to have a defensive foul. We'll see who they call this one on. Official heading over to the score table, and they're going to whistle number three as that one is going to go against the freshman, Carson Erford. That is her first of the night, team's first. As St. Mary's also moving in substitutions as we see number five, Cadence Hirschfield check in for the first time for the Rough Riders. Shot goes up and good. Morgan Hesse able to get that one to go down. Four quick points there for Morgan Hesse, as you said, comes in, leads this Rough Riders team with 10.8 points per game. So four of those here early in the first quarter. Now here's Kaufman down low. Help came from that back side. We're going to have a foul. As this one is going to get whistled on, I believe it's going to be number 14, Reese Rabel. And it is, that is her first, team second. As Ottawa Glantendorf will get the basketball out of bounds underneath their own basket. Hazelman able to get it in. Kicks it right back to Brinkman, and Hazelman in the corner now. Ottawa Glendorf likes to use their size on the inside. As you see, Kauf been trying to um, jockey for position down there, but St. Mary's doing a nice job of forcing Ottawa Glendorf to stay outside. 
Hazelman with the left hand, gets rid of it. Shot is up. That one's no good as Kalen Grothaus couldn't connect. Fight for the rebound. And we're going to have another jump ball. Home fans don't like that call. Possession arrow favors Ottawa Glandorf, so they're going to keep possession as Carson Erford checks back into the game. And we had a few more substitutions for St. Mary's as well as Ashley Ness is into the game, as is Cora Rabel. Hazelman lets the three-point shot go. That one's no good. Hirschfield able to track down the rebound. St. Mary's deciding to slow it down here. As you mentioned before, really a fast-paced quarter here, up and down play. You know, St. Mary's, you know, 50 seconds to go here in the first quarter, deciding to set up some offense, see if they can find an easy bucket, as they found a couple times here in this first quarter. So 35 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. We'll see if St. Mary's wants to hold for the last shot. Almost has that one poked away, but... Lily Hazelman with the aggressive defense is going to pick up the foul. That's going to be her first, team second. St. Mary's now will get the ball out of bounds with 30 seconds to play. Here's Rabel. She's going to go through. Long pass behind the three-point line. Nuss throws it up. That one's no good. Grothaus comes down with the rebound, looking for an outlet. Gets it to Hazelman. Passes it up quickly. Kimmett almost has it taken away, and she does as Ella Jacobs able to get the steal. Now 10 seconds left to go. Cora Rabel brings it up for the Rough Riders. Five seconds. She's going to go into the lane, kicks it down into the corner. Head fake. Got to get rid of it. Shot's not going to make it up before the quarter comes to an end. And after one, the St. Mary's Rough Riders are on top, 13-8. to eight. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, Division of Alts, Seamless Spouting. Taking a look at that Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard, St. Mary's comes out and kind of plays the same game. Ottawa Glandorf plays. They get up and down the floor. They made some turnovers, turned it in that into offense, and they find themselves here with a five-point lead going into the second quarter. Yeah, well, they did everything I think Coach Burke probably wanted them to do in that first quarter. Of They took care of the ball. Uh, no turnovers there in that first quarter. They really took care of the ball. Um, OG had four turnovers in that first quarter. So we got a kick here, but, um, you know, they – you know, knocked down a three. They got, you know, some fast break points. You know, they did a little bit of everything, um, you know, to get this lead. And I'm sure Coach Burke was just telling them, hey, let's keep up this momentum, do exactly what you did, take care of the ball, and um, see where it puts us uh, at the end of the quarter. Jacobs tries to fire Rabel on the inside, but has that one taken away. It's now Grothaus, she's going to drive. Nice seal that time by Kaufman. The Grothaus not able to finish. Erford can't pull down the rebound. Ends up into the hands of Allmeyer. She's going to pass it up to Jacobs. Jacobs doesn't need the dribble, gets it off the glass. That one's no good. Hazelman comes up with the rebound. Here's Grothaus one more time. She's going to drop it down to Erford. Erford's going to put up the two. That one's no good. Kaufman with the rebound. She gets the putback. And Katie Kaufman, who was held scoreless in that first quarter, has her first two of the night. And Katie Kaufman using that size, you know, in that frame to get that offensive rebound. Goes up strong, didn't put it down where you know the Rough Riders can, can slap at it, was able to go up and finish, and was able to cut into this lead and narrow it down to three. Long pass, Jacobs. She puts the shot up. Great catch and shoot by Ella Jacobs. Big three-pointer for St. Mary's. And that was one of the keys that Coach Yant had mentioned to us about tonight is the importance of limiting St. Mary's outside shooting. You know, and St. Mary's knocked down two big threes already tonight. St. Mary's doing a nice job down low as you see Morgan Hesse and Ella Jacobs jockeying down low with Katie Kaufman. Goes out of bounds, last touch by the Rough Riders. Hazelman waits to inbound it, gets it into the hands of Kaufman. She's going to get into that paint. Nice put up with the right hand and gets it to go. Back to back buckets there for Katie Kaufman is starting to find a little bit of room within that 2 3 zone. And Took a couple good dribbles and went up and knocked it down. Messi now trying to find somebody. Ends up in the hands of Jacobs. 
Another three-point shot on its way. This one's going to be off as Reese Rabel couldn't get that one to go down. Rebound ends up in the hands of the Titans. Grothaus going to push the tempo. One-on-one -on -one against Jacobs. A little bit of a push-off, but no whistle. Can't get it to go. Jacobs with the rebound, working against two out of Glendorf defenders. Has to get rid of it. And now it's going to be Hesse. She's going to have to get across midcourt, and she does before the violation. 5.45 left to go here in the half. St. Mary still on top. Lead down by one as they're on top four. Rabel, she sends a three-pointer. This one's off. As Reese Rabel was able to connect on her first three-point try of the night, but hasn't been able to find the range since. This one goes out of bounds, though, and will stay with St. Mary's. Rabel gets the inbound pass. Now here's Cora Rabel working against Hazelman. Nice turnaround into the lane for two. Yeah, great bucket there by Cora Rabel. She was able to drive to her right and looked like she was stopped, but spun very quickly and put up the shot and knocked down the two. Ashley Nuss gets her second foul. She tripped up Carson Erford as she was trying to drive past her. That's the team's third foul. So Ashley, the only one with multiple fouls here in the first half for either team. Erford drops it down to Glenn, back out to Hazelman. She's going to let the three go. That one's good for Ottawa Glendor. Down to a one possession game, 18-15. St. Mary's on top. Jacobs trying to do the back door. Kimmett did a nice job getting her hands up on there. Then Erford loses the handles. This one goes out of bounds. And St. Mary's will get the ball right back. See Emma Brinkman check into the game. Grothaus coming back in as Erford's going to have a seat. I imagine after that possession, Coach Ant want to have a, a quick conversation just about ball control. And they do not like giving possessions away. Yeah, fifth turnover. Here for this OG team on the night. Two to St. Mary's. Hazelman playing great defense. Almost got her hands on that one. See St. Mary's able to get out of trouble as Allmeyer now brings it up. Allmeyer pulls it back. Going to work one-on-one -on -one against Grothaus. Drops it down into the corner. News has to get rid of it. Had to throw it up high that time. Allmeyer able to gather it in. You're seeing that man-to-man -man defense not give St. Mary's as much room as they were getting here early in the game. And here comes the help. Grothaus to Hazelman. Back to Grothaus, and that one falls. Great passes by the teammates there. It's a little hot potato of the ball going back and forth, but really the first bucket they've been able to capitalize off a of transition. A couple turnovers, but able to, to find their teammates and for the easy buckle, bucket. She's, now there's three more. Is This is what you're more used to seeing out of the defense when it comes to Ottawa Glandorf. You know, you see, you're used to seeing that help come around, kind of get them into a difficult spot. The help drops down. You know, then all of a sudden here you turn out and then you look up and you're having the run out. They ha really weren't able to get into that rhythm there in that first quarter. St. Mary's did an excellent job of, of not letting them get comfortable, not letting them do what they wanted to do. But here in the second quarter, we're kind of starting to see them flex that muscle a little bit more. And we're seeing a little bit more help on that defensive side. St. Mary's got a couple of those backdoor cuts, you know, those open layups early in the first quarter. And uh, OG's doing a really good job here of helping, talking to each other, hedging those screens. But an early run out here by St. Mary's and a good bucket. Nice job by Hirschfield. Able to get that one in. Or no, excuse me, I believe that was Rabel. Cora Rabel got that one in. Once again, St. Mary's doing a nice job of running the floor. Here's Aldrich. Has to get rid of it. Brinkman's going to let the three-pointer go. That one's good for Emma Brinkman. We are all tied at 20. That one gets knocked out of bounds as you see Katie Kaufman come back into the game for the Lady Titans. 3.06 left to go here in the first half. Otto Glandorf has erased a five-point deficit to tie this one up at 20. 
More substitutions for both teams. As Emma Brinkman, who just made the three-pointer, is going to have a seat. As you saw Reese Rabel check out for the Rough Riders as well. Hesse gets the inbound, drops it back off. Rabel can't get the reverse layup, but got her own rebound. And we're going to have a foul. They're going to say this one was on the floor. And it is going to go against 22. Kaylin Grothaus, that is her first, team's third. As he waiting for help, nice job getting the defense out of position. She pulls up from that free throw line, and she's going to get the foul call against Katie Kaufman as Morgan Hesse is going to make her first trip to the free throw line. It looked like she might have got bailed out by Katie Kaufman. Wasn't really sure what she wanted to do, if she was going to shoot it or pass it. Kind of threw it up there and drew a little bit of contact from Katie Kaufman, so an opportunity here to shoot two. Morgan's able to get the first free throw to go down. St. Mary's back on top one. Hesse lines up second free throw. Shot is up. And this one is no good. Rebound down to Aldrich. Ottawa Glandorf moving quickly once again. Erford trying to find Grothaus. Had to get around a couple of defenders, so St. Mary's able to uh, catch up. And now Erfer with a three-point shot. No good, but Katie Coffin with the offensive rebound. Tipped it to herself and put it back in for two. Yeah, she's been really big here for this OG team here in the second quarter. Six points here in the quarter. And using that size advantage that she has to corral those offensive rebounds and go back up and score. Hassie going to go baseline, lets this floater up, gets the right hand to go. 23-22, St. Mary's on top. Here's Kimmett. Jacobs comes with the help, but Kimmett able to get it up on nice turnaround to get two more for Kimmett. So right now, both teams just trading leads as they go back and forth, up and down the floor, quick scores. No one really hesitating as St. Mary's once again gets up into the front court very quickly. Here's Rabel. Rabel on the drive. She puts this one up off the side of the rim. And as she went for that rebound, she grabbed a whole lot of Caitlin Kimmett's arm. As Caitlin is, she'll be the one taking this one out for Ottawa Glandorf. As Rabel picks up her first foul, team's fourth. Kaufman going to have a seat. St. Mary's is continuing to stay in that 2-3 zone. And Ottawa Blandor's had a little bit more luck here in the second quarter, trying to get the ball down inside, use some of that size advantage. You know, you only got 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 6'1", players. A little awkward shot there, but pass out with an open shot. And it, after all that, it ends up in the hands of Kaylin Grothaus. And she gets the three-point shot to go down. Ottawa Glandorf, largest lead of the game. They're up four with under a minute left to go here in the first half. Jacobs trying to look for somebody. Ends up in the hands of Rabel. Rabel's going to drive, has it taken away. See Grothaus throw it up ahead to Hazelman. Hazelman to Kimmett. Kimmett with the head fake. Gets it off the glass. No good. Glenn with the offensive rebound. Can't get it to go, but she's going to make a trip to troop two. OG starting to, as you said a little bit, you know, get a little bit more momentum here, especially inside, using that size advantage over this Rough Riders team. You know, a team that likes to play around the outside, has some pretty good guards that have a lot of speed, but this OG team using those their size inside to gain advantages, get those offensive rebounds, and has a couple opportunities here to, to put some points on the board. So Ashley Noose is going to have to take a seat as she picked up her third foul. She was charged for this one against Chloe Glenn as Glenn was able to make her first and second free throws. As Ottawa Glendorf, just like that, stretches this out to... Not real sure what happened. I was looking down at the scorebook. But Ottawa Glendorf with their six-point lead. 
Oh, I almost felt Chloe Glenn thought it was volleyball, and she spiked that ball hard <laughs> just at the official's head. Uh, instead of catching it, she made sure that St. Mary's didn't. 30 seconds left to go here in the first half. Ottawa, or Ottawa Glendorf has taken a uh, six-point lead. St. Mary's trying to get something positive going here before they go into the locker room. Cora Rabel pulls it out, tries to drop it off to Allmeyer, has this one poked away. As Carly Brinkman was able to get a hand on it. So possession will stay with St. Mary's. Uh, looked like OG was about to do a whole line shift, and then the coaches called him back. So maybe they thought with the last 19.5 seconds here to leave this unit out here and hopefully get a stop. Rabel working against Hazelman. Hazelman, great footwork. Up top, keeping her in front of her. Even on the screen, nice roll down to Hesse. Hesse able to get it up with the right hand. And that is going to bring the first half to a close. Fast-paced action up and down the floor by both teams. Pretty clean first half. But after two quarters, Ottawa Glandorf's on top, 29-25. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. Welcome back to St. Mary's High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. Josiah's fast-paced, a lot of action up and down the floor, a lot of scoring. St. Mary's early. OG made up for it there in that second quarter. Yeah, as we talk about the visiting team, this OG uh, Titans team, you know, like you said, kind of started off really slow down in the first quarter, uh, but really came on strong there with that defensive pressure, as we talked about a couple times tonight, is, you know, really get into it, forcing the St. Mary's team to take some tough shots. But, you know, really St. Mary's knocked down a lot of shots um, there in that uh, first half. So Coach Burke will be happy about that. But looking at some scores or some point totals here uh, for this OG team, uh, was led by Kaylin Roadhouse with nine nine points in the first half. Katie Kaufman had six points there in that second quarter. And Caitlin Kimmett has four for the OG team. For the home, St. Mary's Rough Riders, uh, led by Morgan Hesse with nine points in the first half. Cora Gable had six, and Ella Jacobs had five. And immediately a turnover to begin this half. Lily Hazelman all the way to the basket for two. So you got to imagine that that half-court talk was about the defense, about the pressure, wanting more turnovers, and Lily Hazelman comes out right away and gets that for the Titans. Yeah, the and second turnover here. OG definitely turned up that defensive pressure as Grothaus gets all the way there. Coffin does a nice job of trailing, able to put the put back in, and immediately St. Mary's wants to take the timeout. They don't want OG to get this run out to any more. We're going to step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor for Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. We are just underway here in the third quarter. St. Mary's wants to take the quick timeout. As Ottawa Glendorf has came out on a whole other speed defensively. Yeah, and, you know St. Mary's did a really good job there in that first half of taking care of the ball. Only had three turnovers there in the first half. Two quick turnovers here led to four easy points for this OG team, OGT team. So uh, Coach Burke, you know, called that timeout. Good timeout. Kind of just settled down. Almost turned the ball over again here for a third time, but we're able to corral the ball, and now we'll see if they can run some good offense. So here's Hesse up top. Looked for the inside, but ends up getting over to Jacobs. Both teams have their original starting five out on the floor for Ottawa Glandorf. That's Carson Erford, Lily Hazelman, Kaitlin Gronhaus, Caitlin Kimmett, and Katie Kaufman. As this one is going to be taken away by the Titans. All the way, Grothaus has it taken away. Great hustle by Cora Rabel to run the floor, but then taken right back as Ottawa Glandorf right now. It's, it's almost like they got glue on their hands. They just keep grabbing the ball. It ends up in their, they're playing great defense. And Katie Kaufman now will take a trip to the free throw line to shoot two. Morgan Hesse called on that foul. That's her first, team's first of the half. 
Kaufman held scoreless in that first quarter, but came up with six big points there in the second. Not able to connect on her first free throw. So we have a substitution as Grothaus will take a seat and Michael Aldridge checks into the game. Kaufman's second shot is on its way. This one is no good as well. Rebound ends up in the hands of Rabel. Rabel brings it up for St. Mary's, gets it down into the corner for Allmeyer. St. Mary's had a lot of success in that first half. They run that kind of flex offense. As it looks like we got another turnover here and a quick pass out to Lily Hazelman for an easy bucket. Hazelman once again able to get a basket. That's her fourth point here of the quarter. As Ottawa Glandorf now with a double digit lead, 35-25. Oh, and as I was saying, that flex offense, they're finding these backdoor cuts, which is found here a little bit. And great offensive rebound, and a, looks like it's going to be a foul. St. Mary's that time had gotten fortunate as Carson Erford had slipped up top, so Morgan Hesse had come free all the way down. That's why she found herself so wide open underneath the basket. Not able to connect on the first try, but on the putback, Kaufman got her across the side of the head maybe that time. She's going to make a trip to the free throw line. That was Kaufman's second foul here of the game. As Hesse's first free throw is no good. Chloe Glenn coming into the game for the first time this half. And Kaylin Grothaus checks back into the game for the Titans. As you see, Ashley Noose um, at the scorer's table waiting to check in. She has three fouls. So not able to connect on either one of the free throws on that trip as Hesse's going to take a seat. So still 10-point lead, six minutes left to go here in the third. Kimmett gets it over to Hazelman. Hazelman gets to the free throw line, passes it off as Ottawa Glandorf has great ball movement. Grothaus gets the shot up. That one's no good. Gets tipped out. Rebound ends up in the hands of Allmeyer. Oh, good possession there by OG. Just wasn't able to knock down the three, but you know it's nice to see when every player on your team touches the ball and moves it side to side. Got the open look that they wanted, just wasn't able to capitalize on it. Chloe Glenn comes up with the turnover. She's going to run the floor. Takes it all the way in herself. Picks up the contact. And this one's going to go on number 20, Cora Rabel. That is her second, team second, as Chloe Glenn makes a trip to the free throw line. Chloe Glenn just two points tonight, but both of those came from the free throw line in the second quarter. She lines up her first shot. This one's no good. Emma Brinkman, Carson Erford back into the game. Neither team shooting particularly well from the free throw line tonight. OG here with this shot. One for six on the night. Sorry, two for six. St. Mary's one for four. So let's see if St. Mary's can capitalize on the missed three throws by Chloe Glenn. And this one gets poked out as Caitlin Grothaus continues to play excellent defense. Well, I think we're starting to see the OG forcing St. Mary's to start their offensive possessions a little farther out than they did in that first half. Saw a lot of that possession, that tough defensive possession here, now starting to pay off for this OG team. Rabel tried to pick Erford's pocket. Erford able to get it up, but Ella Jacobs does a great job getting her hand on that one to block that shot. Allmeyer sends the three-pointer on the way, and it's good. That was really the first open look St. Mary's had this third quarter as they were able to work the ball and find Allmeyer open in the corner, and she knocked down the big three. And that's a big shot for St. Mary's. As it's been a while since they've been able to get some offense going as they get this back down to a seven-point lead. 
4.35 left to go. Three-point shot on its way. Emma Brinkman not able to connect on that one as it goes off the top of the backboard. So the basketball will go back to the Rough Riders. OG continuing in this full court pressure here as they get another turnover. Chloe Glenn does a great job, read that the whole way. And then as she tried to cut, Ashley Noose does a great job, got her hand on that basketball, just made sure just enough to make sure that Chloe Glenn didn't have a free run at it, but not so aggressive as she could get called for the foul, ends up in a travel. So St. Mary's with another opportunity. Those long passes by St. Mary's, OG's done a nice job of telegraphing those as Chloe Glenn almost came up with a steal one more time, but St. Mary's able to get that one in. Here's Jacobs working against Aldridge. Gets cut off by Erford, has to go back baseline. Gets it down into the corner, an extra pass. Allmeyer for a three-pointer. This one rattles in and out. And we're going to have a foul as Cora Rabel flew in there to try to grab that basketball from Grothaus. And she's going to pick up her third foul. Got an unfortunate foul there by Cora Gable. So far from the basket, just a little bit too aggressive on that rebound. Now she's going to have to take a seat for a little bit. So now St. Mary's, they have two players with three fouls. As Ashley Nuss is on the floor with three. Cora Gable sitting on the bench with three. Nobody in any real foul trouble for Ottawa Glandor. Hazelman all alone in the corner. She's going to let this one go, and that one rattles down. You cannot give Lily Hazelman that much space as she had plenty of time to set her feet and get a good shot off. Well, 10 points on the night for Lily Hazelman. Uh, mostly known for, though, her defensive pressure as she gets another hand on that ball on that backdoor cut, but she's been able to knock down some buckets for this tight team tonight. Lob ends up into the hands of Rabel, gets it over to Hesse. Hesse back to Rabel. Thought about a long three-pointer, but decides against it. Now Hesse's going to drive with the right hand. She's going to pick up the contact. Can't get it to fall, but she's going to have two free throws coming. Caitlin Grothaus gets called for that foul. That's her second. Team second of this half as Morgan Hesse Makes another trip to the free throw line. Tonight, one for three. And now one for four. Second shot up, and this one is good. 38-29, Ottawa Glendorf on top. Here's Hazelman over to Grothaus. Now Erford with a little bit of space, pulls up from just inside the lane, can't get it to go. Kaufman fights for the offensive rebound and gets it to go. Katie Kaufman, point number nine and 10 on the night. You know, just that size advantage that she can play with, you know, three, four, five inches taller than you know, her opponent and was able to just tip it to herself. She's done that a couple times a night where she just tipped it, yep. corralled the ball, and then went up for a bucket. And it just looks like her own little personal tip drill. That one just out of her reach, though, ends up in the hands of Hesse. She works against four out of Glendor. Titans gets rid of it. Rabel's three-pointer ends up short. Grothaus tracks it down into the corner. Here's the trap, able to dribble out of it. Has to pass it up ahead, gets it into the hands of Kaufman. Kaufman, she's going to drive, pulls up, jumper, no good. Erford. This one's off the glass, no good. Another offensive rebound. Here's Kimmett, and Kimmett's third opportunity gets it to go. 42-29, two minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Long pass, but not before a foul will get called. I believe this one's going to go on Grothaus. And it is, as that will be Kalen Grothaus's third foul. Some more substitutions coming in as we see number 25, Cadence Hirschfield, come in for St. Mary's. 
as does Cor Rabel checking back into the game. Mike Aldrich checks in for Ottawa Glandorf, along with Carly Brinkman. And they're going to have a, another foul. This time it tie up, or excuse me, yep. a tie up. And possession arrow this time favors the Titans. Brinkman looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Ends up with Kaufman. Kaufman catches it out of bounds, though. So it'll go back to St. Mary's. As see Coach Ant talking to the officials. They want the push, but the foul call not going to come. So St. Mary's this time going to be the beneficiary of that turnover as Chloe Glenn and Emma Brinkman check into the game. Coach Ant wasn't too happy with the official there. It looked like the official might have been, didn't have a good view of that, but... Anyway, come to St. Mary's, an opportunity here to see if they can cut into this lead. Allmeyer working against Aldrich. It's rid of it, Rabel. She's going to try the left hand and back to the right. Works in the lane, can't find any space, so has to get rid of it. And now Hirschfield's going to pull it back, let St. Mary's get reset. And Emma Brinkman goes in for the steal. She's going to get whistled for the contact. That will be Emma's first foul. Team's fourth. So St. Mary's has got to find some way to get this offense going. Things have not come easy for them here in the second or you know, so far here in the third as we have a minute 20 left to go. They are just not finding the same kind of space that they were in that first quarter. Yeah, you know, their offense being forced to, to start a little bit higher. Those passing angles to find those cutters just haven't been there, but... You know, you got to credit this OG defense as they've really gotten it after here. Just another tough one, forced another turnover because she had no options. A little bit of frustration that time. Is this is what the Ottawa Glendorf defense will do. I've, I've seen them play a couple of times this year, and it always seems right about this time, late in the third, early fourth quarter, it's not always just the pressure that they bring. It's not the physicality. It's that mental exhaustion. You know, they, you know, you get. You can start getting, you know, happy feet. You, you throw the ball away a little bit quicker because you just know they're coming and they're not going to give you any space. And you just start wearing teams down mentally. Brinkman, wide open for three, gets this one to rattle in. And that's her second three of the night. You know, but as you were saying, though, is, you know, they go nine deep, you know, and they bring players off the bench, you know, that, and there's no letdown. So that continued defensive pressure continues all night and like you said most teams can't bring in nine players at that level you know and continue to compete and, and uh, you know as we get to travel here but you know they're just uh, you know kind of testament to this OG program you know they've done it for many years you know where they play a lot of players you know expect their players to play at a high level and we see that tonight. St. Mary's not going away though in the last offensive possession Ella Jacobs so it's a tremendous footwork down low just continuing to pivot and change her direction until she finally had a little bit of space, got that one to go down, and then they came down on the defensive side, forced the turnover. Here's Cora Rabel. Hazelman tried to cut her off. Cora spins back into Micah Aldrich, has that one taken away, but now St. Mary's with their own takeaway. Rabel, head fake, going to drive, gets into the body of Chloe Glenn. We're going to have a charge. So Cora Rabel going to get whistled for the offensive foul. That will be her fourth of the night. As she really had nowhere to go that time. Every time she turned, she just had a sea of blue around her because Ottawa Glendorf just continuing to swarm to the basketball. And on these scramble plays, it just seems like right now Ottawa Glendorf just a little bit ahead of St. Mary's. Yeah, and I think the officials are doing a really good job of just keeping it, you know, really the same. There's been a lot, a lot, I say a lot of contact, but there's been a lot of physicality, you know, played tonight, and officials are letting them play, and I think both teams or coaches appreciate that. So at the buzzer, see Reese Rabel able to take that one away from Caitlin Kimmett, and that brings the third quarter to a close. After three, St. Mary's on top, or excuse me, St. Mary's trailing. 45-31, we'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. Fourth quarter just about underway here at St. Mary's High School. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. And, you know, where we're at in this game now isn't necessarily where it seemed like we were going to be when we got started. St. Mary seemed like they were very much up to the task. They were running the floor. They were giving Ottawa Glandorf a taste of their own medicine, turning defense into offense, and they had opened up, uh, you know, at one point in a seven-point lead. Ottawa Glandorf, though, since then has really clamped things down. St. Mary's only a six-point quarter there in the third. Well, the story of the night, which is another turnover here, is St. Mary's ten turnovers in the third quarter. You know, and that led to a lot of easy buckets there. Uh, number 11 here in the second half. So that's kind of been the story is they were able to take care of the ball, control kind of that tempo as you talked about. Even though it was a fast-paced tempo, they were controlling what they were doing. You know, and this second half, it's been all OG. So St. Mary's going to have to get off to a quick start here in the fourth to give themselves an opportunity. That time, a fortunate play as they had that one poked away. Hazelman couldn't finish it. And in the scramble, ends up back in the hands of Hazelman. The problem was she was standing out of bounds. Reese Rabel lines up the three-point shot, and that'll help get him closer. Back down to a single-digit lead, 45. Or excuse me, still a double-digit, but a little bit closer now as Ottawa Glandor just up 11. Great take there by Lily Hazelman. Points number 12 on the night as saw the opportunity to that left side of the court cleared out for her, and she drove with her left hand and laid it off the glass. Lily Hazelman has had a battle back from some injuries right towards the end of soccer season. You know, this Ottawa Glendorf girls soccer team had a lot of success, made it to the state finals. Lily Hazelman, a big part of that team, gets injured and has had to battle back, but you can see from tonight her speed hasn't gone anywhere, her lateral movement hasn't gone anywhere, as she has just been a force defensively and offensively. That three-point shot, no good. We're going to have a whistle, as this foul, I believe, is going to go on Number three, Carson Erford, her second. That is the team's fifth. And honestly, injuries have been kind of the story of this entire OG team. They're still trying to get people healthy. Um, Chloe Glenn's been battling knee injuries. You know, when you look up and down, I mean, I don't mean to make light of anybody's injuries, but, you know, it's almost like the OG girls team are keeping the knee brace companies in, in, you know, in business right now. You know, unfortunately, they just had a lot of girls who have had a lot of um, unfortunate injuries. They got a lot of knee braces, and these girls are trying to work their way back into form, and it's coming. But, you know, that I think that also is what is such a huge benefit of this rotation that they can throw out on the floor. They can go deep so girls don't have to put as many minutes on the floor. They don't get as worn down, and they can ease people back into these minutes so that they're ready when it comes crunch time. Yeah, and what's scary is, like you said, is though they're not healthy, you know, <laughs> and we see these type of performances and the defensive pressure that they give every single night and, you know, the type of effort and a big shot there by Ella. Ella Jacobs from almost a three-quarter court line gets that one to go down as Ottawa, or excuse me, St. Mary's now down to a 10-point deficit. Kaufman, she gets into the lane, somehow gets that one off and in. But as I was saying, you know, you know, with them not being healthy, you know, just imagine when this team gets healthy and, you, you know, as a coach always says, is you're always preparing for that tournament run. You know, this OG team, they're, they're accustomed to those long tournament runs. So if they can get healthy and start peaking at the end of the year, you know, this team's going to be very scary. Ella Jacobs trying to keep her team in it, though. Back-to-back -back baskets. Back to a 10-point deficit. 5.25 left to go. This one's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Ottawa Glendorf, so it'll stay with St. Mary's. Here's Grothaus back to Brinkman. Grothaus up top. She's going to let the three-pointer go. That one's going to be off. Jacobs comes up with the rebound. So this is a big possession. It's been a long time since St. Mary's has had a, uh, just a single-digit deficit. And if they can come up with some points here, they're setting themselves up for a good run with still five minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Hesse going to work against a double team all the way around against Kaufman. High off the glass for two. And that is going to be a timeout by St. Mary's as now they find themselves down just eight points. We will step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. 49-41, 4.53 left to play in the game as St. Mary's has gone a little bit of a run here. A 7-0 spurt has got them back in this game. Well, a lot of these shots have really been tough shots. You know, a couple deep threes. You know, that kind of off-balance shot by Morgan Hess driving over to over the bigger defender was able to knock down the two. So we'll see if St. Mary's can get a stop here and, and close this gap. Grothaus able to dribble out of trouble. Erford gets it over to Hazelman. Hazelman down to Kaufman down low, and Kaufman gets it up for two. And Kaufman's had some really big buckets as St. Mary's has tried to gain a little bit of momentum. We see Katie Kaufman using that size down low to hit some big buckets. 4.23 left to go here in the game. St. Mary's is trying to see if they can't keep pace. They're going to need some defensive stops. Cora Rabel sends a three-point shot up, and that one's good. So St. Mary's will be happy to trade threes for twos as they are now just down seven. Kaufman's going to drive high off the glass. No good. The offensive rebound comes down to Lily Hazelman. Well, that's one of the problems with this zone that St. Mary's, as they look like they're trying to shift out of it a little bit, you know, rebounding out of his zone makes it very difficult. And OG with that size able to tip it, tip the ball around a couple times and find the rebound. So ball goes out of bounds. It will stay with Ottawa Glandorf. So Hazelman comes over to trigger the inbound. Erford, quick catch and shoot. That one's no good. Kaufman, though, with the offensive rebound. Scramble for the loose ball. We're going to have a tie-up. Possession arrow favors Ottawa Glandorf. And Erford's really struggled tonight. Comes in on the season averaging 8.9 points a game. No points tonight. Even though she's a confident shooter that time, she thought about maybe she might try that one again, but decides to pull this one down. And fortunate for Ottawa Glendorf that time is they were able to maintain possession. The one bright side, if you're St. Mary's, you at least got the possession arrow flipped in case you need it. Kemet, she's going to drive. That one's no good. Jacobs with the rebound. Cora Rabel going to push it up ahead. This one gets poked out by Kimmett. Great hustle by Kimmett to get down the floor. And with just far enough down there to tip that one out of bounds, possession will stay with St. Mary's as Chloe Glenn comes back into the game. So St. Mary's here in this possession, an opportunity to make it just a two-possession game. Cora Rabel, head fake. She's going to drive, works against Glenn. Can't get that one up. Looked like she was trying to get some contact, but... Chloe Glenn does a nice job. Kimmett tried to fit it in there to Glenn, has it when kicked as Allmeyer knocks that one away. And it's interesting to look here at the different kind of strategies that both coaches are doing. St. Mary's kind of going out with that four guards. You know, one post player inside, whereas OG, great hands there um, by Hazelman, but OG's kind of went with the size three post players on there and an easy bucket by Chloe Glenn. Chloe Glenn on the run out. She gets that two-pointer to go. 2.35 left to go. St. Mary's needs a bucket. Allmeyer slips it down to Hesse. Hesse, she's going to go, gets this one off, and we are going to have a foul. Morgan Hesse is going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Personal foul, number 32, Caitlin Kimmett. Her first. Caitlin Kimmett gets whistled for the foul. That is her first of the game. It is Ottawa Glandor seventh. So from here on out, St. Mary's will shoot free throws if necessary. As Hesse's free throw is up, and this one is good. And you mentioned the free throw uh, woes of St. Mary's in this game, and as they're trying to claw their way back into this one, uh, they're going to look back and, and be pretty upset that they didn't hit these at a higher clip. Second free throw is good, though. Substitution. As Cora Rabel is going to check out and have a seat. 
Well, and as you said, it's big for these free throws. Knock them down because you want to score points when there's no time coming off the clock. And Hesse almost takes that one away. Chloe Glenn has to fight, and they just get that one up before the backcourt violation. Hazelman in the corner. Gets it to Kaufman, but Hesse comes out of nowhere. But she get tied up as she was trying to get around Kaufman, and that gave Hazelman just enough time to get in there and take it. Kaufman, she puts the shot up. That one's no good. Morgan Hesse comes up with the free throw. Yeah, Coach Ant wasn't too happy with that shot selection there. As, you know, you got this lead here and less than two minutes to go, and you, you shoot a shot just to step inside the three-point line. Ella Jacobs puts one up, and that one's good. So now a five-point game. Grothaus left all alone up there. Minute 30 left to go. Kaufman gets it over to Hazelman. Ottawa Glandorf completely content just to run clock here. It's going to be up to St. Mary's to try to see when they're going to want to foul. Chloe Glenn back out to Grothaus. Now here's Kaufman. They're going to have to foul at some point. 105, almost threw that one away. And we're going to have our first whistle. So we're going to have stop and play. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. So some substitutions during that last stoppage of play as everybody gets reset for this final minute of action. Roadhouse almost able to get rid of it. We have a timeout as Coach Yank quickly gets that one in, wanting to maintain possession. So with that timeout, we'll step aside out of a Glandorf on top, 53-48, trying to hold off a of surging St. Mary's. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stover here at St. Mary's High School. 54 seconds left to go. St. Mary's has worked and got this back within a five-point game. And they got a hope for a turnover, and they get one. Allmeyer picks Hazelman's pocket, but she can't get it to go in. And we're going to have a foul as that is exactly what St. Mary's was looking for. Allmeyer gets the rare turnover on Lily Hazelman, but can't get it to go in. And we're going to have a foul this one, though. Still one foul to go for St. Mary's, so this one's going to be under the basket for Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah, Reagan Allmeyer did everything that she needed to. Played great defense, got the steal. The only thing that was lacking was that finish. And sometimes I think when you have all that time, you think about it too much, and Left it a little bit short, and now we'll see if St. Mary's has to foul quickly or force a quick turnover. Trying to get the turnover. And we're going to have the foul. This one is going to go against Reese Rabel. As Ottawa Glandorf now will go to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. So we got to hope for some misses as. This is going to be the first trip to the free throw line on the ninth for Caitlin Kimmett. Six points as she is trying to stretch this out. If she can make both of these, can make it a three possession game. Kimmett gets the first one. Six point difference, 48-54, big second free throw for Ottawa Glandorf. Caitlin Kimmett lines up her second shot. It's on its way, and this one is good. So 30.7 seconds left to go. St. Mary's is going to have to go quick. They're going to need the ball in their hands at least three times. Here's Hesse. She gets it over to Rabel. Rabel, head fake, resets her feet, gets a shot up. That one's going to be no good. Ottawa Glandorf gets it up. Ten seconds left to go. And that is going to about do it, it looks like, as St. Mary's is going to not foul. Ottawa Glandorf will pass it around, and that will bring this one to a close. Ottawa Glandorf knocks off St. Mary's 54-48. to 
We'll be back to talk about it on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor for the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. We had a great game tonight. Ottawa Glendorf holds off St. Mary's as they surge at the end, but just ran out of time. It was really those middle two quarters where OG really flexed their muscle, got a lot of turnovers. They really put that defense um, to good use. St. Mary's did a nice job coming out of this game and then fighting back there in that fourth quarter, but just fell a little short. Yeah, it really was the tale of two halves there. As we looked at that first half of St. Mary's, you know, took care of the ball, got some easy buckets, knocked down some big shots, you know, really forced OG to run their offense, gave them some tough shots, you know, and it really paid off with that, that close lead, um, you know, at halftime. For OG, you know, St. Mary's was right where they wanted to be in the game, but that second half, that defense by Ottawa Glandorf really turned it up, um, forcing double-digit turnovers there in that second half by the St. Mary's Rough Riders team. And then you just look at this this balanced team from OG, and we look at some of the, the point totals um, on the night. Uh, Katie Kaufman leads the team 14 points on the night, really hit some big buckets when St. Mary's grabbed some momentum, hit some big buckets down lows, used that size. We talked about it, you know, kind of tapped that ball to herself multiple times and scored. You know, look at Lily Hazelman, known for her defense, but 12 big points tonight, um, you know, with some big turnovers, especially starting that second half, um, kind of got that OG team um, rolling. Uh, nine points, Kalen Grothaus scored a lot of those in the first half, um, but we look at that balanced team uh, for the OG. Um, as we look for that home team, you know, 14 big points from Ella Jacobs, Morgan Hesse, um, nine points from Cora Rabel. As you said, fought back really hard. You know, looked like it was going to be, you know, two possession, one possession game. You know, they continue to battle, and, um, but uh, congrats to this uh, Titans team as they move to 4-0 in the Western Buckeye League. Yeah, big win for Ottawa Glendorf. They've had a lot of tough games here lately. They got off to a rough start. Um, you know, Coach Ant's not going to make excuses for his team, but they get a late start to the season in general because of the soccer success that these girls had, and most of this team played on that soccer team. But they seem to be rounding into form, and even on games where maybe they get off that slow start, you know, St. Mary's, I think, came out and caught them by surprise. They came out, they went right after them. They wanted to run. They weren't letting them really get into the flow of the game, but they rode that out, um, took, took uh, control there in that second quarter a little bit, then that defense clamped down. St. Mary's only a six-point third quarter really was the difference when it came down to it as St. Mar Mary's had a valiant effort there at the end. A couple of big shots. Saw Ella Jacobs with a deep one. Um, we saw Reese Rabel with a deep three-pointer as well. But in the end, it was too much Ottawa Glandorf. Ottawa Glandorf now moves on to another difficult one this coming Saturday on WOSN. They're going to be playing Fort Lormie. And down at Fort Lormie, always an excellent game between two storied programs. Um, I'll be fortunate enough to be down there to call that game. Uh, Ottawa Glendorf's schedule doesn't get any easier. They, they purposely pack this thing with, you know, tough game after tough game. They already have to run the gauntlet in the WBL. But then that non-conference schedule continues to be difficult. And, you know, that's why we see success out of them year in and year out. St. Mary's, you know, they take the loss in conference play, but still a lot of games left to go. They still got themselves in position to do something. They can get a couple teams ahead of them to slip up. Yeah, like you said, with this OG team and their schedule, you know, like you said, that gauntlet of the Western Buckeye League, always tough, but, you know, those those Fort Laramie games, you know, those prepare you for the tournament time, and that's really what Coach Yant, you know, wants to prepare his team, show them all types of different teams, you know, their ability levels, you know, toughness, um, and Fort Laramie will be a great test for this Rough Riders team, but or for this Titans team, but, you know, looking forward to, to watching both of these teams, you know, both really solid teams here, you know, can make a really big push in the tournament. Yep. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at St. Mary's High School. I'd like to thank our crew working behind the scenes, doing a great job as always. Lexi and Megan working the cameras for us, doing an awesome job. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. One final time for, from St. Mary's. The Ottawa Glendorf Titans come into Rough Rider country and take away the victory. They're going to walk away the 55-48 victors. For Josiah Sober, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.